Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy today. Very happy to be joined by Roxy, Ring of Honor World Women's Champion. Rock. Hello. I guess I call you Rock. Is your is your real name a secret here in wrestling? <laughs> no. Uh, so my real name is actually Carla. So that's what the C is kind of for. <laughs> Carla. But you can call me Roxy. <laughs> All right, Roxy. Well, I wanted to get you on the show for a while because the uh, the women's tournament. I was watching the women's tournament, and I swear to God, the listeners can confirm this. I watched this tournament, and I said the finals need to be. Miranda Alizé and Roxy, and Roxy needs to win this tournament. And in fact, the finals were Miranda Alizé and Roxy, and you won the tournament. And I was delighted. <laughs> well, thank you for putting it out into the universe. <laughs> yes, and uh, I thought that the match, I thought the match was the best match on the show, as did a thank lot of the viewers. So and I just want your thoughts on on what that match meant to you. Well, that was really cool. For one, me and Miranda are both from Texas, and we both trained at Booker T School, uh, as well as we both trained under Daga. So uh, I think it's kind of cool how we kind of were like, uh, we kind of learned uh, under the same people. I think that's really cool. And she was also my first, uh, she was my first match at Booker T's Reality of Wrestling. So that was my first match there. I was like 17 or 16. And then it's kind of like full circle to have our our third match. We had a second match as well as on the Indies. So to have like our third match uh, on Ring of Honor pay-per-view and for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship, like I thought that was amazing. And then my family was there. So a lot of my family and friends were watching uh, from Texas. And then my mom and my dad were there. So they were able to come into the ring with me to celebrate when I won. And my mom was crying. My mom had literally cried like five times on that trip before the match had even happened. Um, but it's just so cool because she's such a big part of my journey. And uh, the moment that I said that I wanted to become a professional wrestler when I was like 10 years old, she was 100% supportive. And to have her there, like it just made that moment like 10 times more special. Now I have to. I have to. You said you wanted to become a wrestler when you were ten years old, and uh, yeah. you. I th did. You begin training at eleven. <laughs> so uh, there is a local wrestling promotion called LWA, Laredo Wrestling Alliance, uh, from my hometown, and I had no idea what the independent scene was. And so my dad, he's a firefighter, and his friend uh, that he worked with was a wrestler for that for that uh, little company and so he started taking to me those sh taking me to those shows when I was like 10 and I was like oh like I want to be a part of this and so I told my mom and when I was like 11 she asked the promoter like hey uh can my daughter start training and they were like oh that's a little iffy uh <laughs> maybe put her into like tumbling and uh that'll kind of help her for when she does it when she is able to start training and so I did that and then when I was 13, my mom asked again, and they were like, all right, bring her in. <laughs> so so you started training at 13, and then you would have had yes. your first match. It says on, I don't know if this Wikipedia is accurate. Usually it's not. But uh, 2014 was your, your first match? Uh, uh, 2016. 16. I was 14. All right, so we can we can tell them to fix that. That's still uh, six years in the ring, and you're 19 years old. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, back in the day, people used to start very, very young. And then it kind of was like, eh, you know, I don't know if it's a good thing to, to start that young. And then, like, all of a sudden, if you look on the indies today, I mean, uh, the Nick Wayne is 16 years. He just turned 16 years old. He's been wrestling since he was 11. And they had a match at the, the Black Label Pro and... Uh, I forget who he, he wrestled, but it was another guy that was like 16 years old. I mean, it, yeah. now it's it's back to everybody being super young to get into this business again. It is. It's so cool. Like, we have uh, Billy Starks. She's uh, 16, I believe. Um, and there's another little girl, Mia Friday, from Texas. And uh, she's 15. And uh, when I first met her, she was like, oh, like, you inspire me so much. And it's really cool to kind of, like, see that just because, I was. You're a 19 year old grizzled vet? Yeah. <laughs> 
and it's so it's just so crazy because like I used to like I looked up to Paige and she started training when she was like 13 and I was like oh my god like that's so amazing I I bet that I could do that too if she could do it and now there's like so many other like young girls coming into the business and it just makes my heart so happy now being born when you were, you didn't probably see the peak of Booker T's career when he was uh, <laughs> when he was in the ring there. What was it like meeting him? How often were you able to see him, I guess, when it came to training uh, at his academy? And how did they take to you being five feet tall and so young? Did, 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 they, uh, did they try to put you through your paces and see if you really wanted to do this thing? Yeah, uh, Booker T's awesome. Uh, he's so awesome. And I remember the first time I met him, uh, it was actually like a uh, Rise slash Reality of Wrestling show. And I did I did a seminar. So that was the first time I went up to Booker's. I did a seminar and uh, I ba it was basically like they would choose uh, they would choose someone from the seminar to like have a match. And I ended up getting chosen to do two matches. And after that, uh, I went and like asked him for critiques, and he he gave me such good advice. And uh, I remember I was like talking to him. My mind kind of drifted for a second. I was like, wait, am I talking to Booker T right now? And I was like, okay, wait, <laughs> back to reality. Um, uh, but yeah, he's so awesome. Uh, he he talks about how like he's like yeah the first time I saw you in the ring you looked like a deer in in front of some headlights so he's like and now you're you're becoming a star and it's just really cool because I kind of grew up at reality wrestling and like Booker T and Charmel have seen me uh, from since when I was like 16 and now I'm about to be 20 and I'm doing things at like Ring of Honor and uh, they're just they're, they're so awesome. You know, one of the things that impressed me about you in the tournament was that you were a good wrestler. Uh, not that you wouldn't be a good wrestler, but sometimes you see, you know, people earlier in their careers or when they're younger, they're all about what kind of crazy stuff can I do? Can I do these dives? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. But your your wrestling was was very good. And the, the question that I would have is when you were growing up, who were the wrestlers that you really enjoyed watching and and did you want to be somebody who was like a good wrestler or did you did you watch a lot of high flying because obviously being short i mean probably like a ray mysterio uh, would be somebody yeah. that you would you would look at but who are your influences uh, so i really liked uh the rock i was a huge fan of the rock um i liked aj lee uh I was a fan of CM Punk, Sheamus. Um, yeah, I I was told uh, from a very young age, like when I started wrestling, like you're really young and you could do so much. So like preserve your body <laughs> and don't do all this crazy stuff because uh, it, it's going to cost you. And so that always stuck with me because I, I want to do this for a really long time. And um, I don't want my body to start breaking down, like, too fast. And so, uh, yeah, I try not to do a bunch of, like, this crazy stuff. And I also feel like uh, you could do so much with uh, so little, like, just by telling a story instead of doing, like, all these crazy, crazy dives and whatnot. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, the other thing as a follow-up is, is as you noted, Paige being one of your influences, she started very young, and uh, she ended up also retiring very young with a neck injury. And, you know, watching your tournament matches, I mean, I didn't see a lot of head dropping. I didn't see a lot of craziness. What is your What is your thoughts on how to preserve your career and make sure that having started so young, you don't end up with some sort of early chronic injury um i think for one it's that just the kind of realizing that you don't have to do uh all this crazy stuff in every single one of your matches kind of like save that and then also uh my trainers didn't let me have a uh an actual match until i was like two years into training and uh i was there almost every day and uh i was working on the basics and i still work on the basics to this day just because it's so important um and i think that 
uh, it's so important because it, it, it's just you learn ways to protect yourself and kind of be safer. Um, I feel like, obviously, like right when I went to training, I was like, ooh, I want to try this move and I want to try this move. And they're like, all right, settle down, kid. <laughs> Let's teach you how to bump first and protect your neck. <laughs> and I did that for a really long while. Yeah, I don't want to shatter kayfabe all over the place here, but right now, as you train every day, as you look to get better, there's a lot of great talent in, in Ring of Honor, especially people like Jay Lethal, folks who have been around for a long time. Who are you working with now to get better, and, and who do you watch outside of Ring of Honor, or even inside of Ring of Honor? Who are your influences currently in the business? Um, so I think uh, in Ring of Honor, I think Jonathan Gresham uh, and Jay Lethal, they're amazing. Uh, and uh, every time that I've been there so far, like I've, I've gone to them after my matches and, hey, do you have any critiques for me? And uh, they're always really nice and really awesome. Um, who else? Um, there's a, a train. Well, Gino Medina, he, he's actually a trainer at Reality Wrestling as well. Um, and he's so good. Uh, he, I think he's signed to MLW right now. And, uh, yeah, he's awesome. Uh, and he's kind of the same where he doesn't do too many, like, crazy spots and high-flying things. Like, he's a really, really good wrestler. Um, who else? There's there's a lot of women. Ruby Soho, I think she's amazing. I want to get in the ring with her one day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's so many uh, people that I kind of uh, study and whatnot. I, I watch a lot of Daniel Bryan from Ring of Honor. I think he was, like, amazing. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. So, would you say that the, and granted it's been a long career thus far, would you say the pay-per-view match where you won the championship, was that your favorite match of your career? Would you say it was the best match of your career, or what else should people seek out? Who well, honestly, I I really think that, that that definitely is the best match of my career. Um me and Miranda have, like, really good chemistry for some reason. And, uh, I mean, it, it, I think that kind of falls under how we were trained by the same people. Um, but, yeah, um, me versus Hyon at Reality Wrestling for the Diamonds Championship, that will always be one of my favorites. Um, that is when I became the, their youngest champion in history. Uh, so that's pretty cool, too. Um just because I, I now I made history twice. <laughs> now, I don't know how they, they put the tournament together, but, I mean, I would presume that from day one they were aware that you were going to become the champion. I mean, did they ask you, like, okay, here's a lineup of all the women in this tournament. Who could you have the best match with in the finals? Or did it just happen to be you two in the finals? Yeah, it just happened. I didn't. I literally did not know until the day of. Really? Um, so I ha yeah, I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and how was how was that reaction when you found out? Did your mother cry again? Did you tell her? Or did you did you hold it no, off? No, <laughs> I did, I did not tell my mom. Oh man. <laughs> I did not tell my mom. Uh, and Maria made sure to tell. She was like, "Do not tell your mom what's going to happen. Don't tell your parents." Uh, so they were completely shocked, and it was really cool. Yeah, you, you should have told them you were going to lose. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I've done that yes. before. Yes. <laughs> Oh, so now they don't trust you. After all that, you have no, to lie to them? Risk, <laughs> then you risk that they may not watch. They're like, I didn't want to see you lose. I didn't watch. Oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> all right. Stand by, everybody. We're going to head to a break. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. You're clear. Need me to leave it and talk back, Brian? Uh, I'm not sure we can. Uh, I think the video. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. Stand by, everybody. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Roxy joining us here. Ring of Honor World Women's Champion. You can watch Ring of Honor. A lot of different ways. If you have a Sinclair affiliate, it airs on the weekends. Or you can head up to ROHWrestling.com. Up at the top, it says, Watch. And you hit the watch thing, and you can watch it. What could be easier than that? As well as airing free on Fight.tv. And, Roxy, let's get some plugs in for your social media and anything else you'd like to get out there. Yes. So uh, my Instagram is at underscore ROKC. My Twitter is the Roxy underscore. 
Um, and I have a pro wrestling tee that's the Real Roxy. And I do have my first Ring of Honor merch uh, at ringofhonorshop.com. And there's two t-shirts up there. Ringofhonormerch.com? Yes. No. I believe so. Ring of Honor Shop. Ringofhonorshop.com. There we go. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for doing the show today, and best of luck with everything. And uh, just thought that match was great. So so uh, excellent job. Uh, thumbs up to Booker T. Did a fine job training. There's a list of about five other people that helped train you as well. Daga as well. So, Hey, shout uh, out to Stu Myrick down there, the announcer for the reality there. So That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, hey, thanks so much for doing the show today. Of course, thanks, everybody, for listening. We are totally out of time. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Thanks, everybody, on Twitch. We'll talk to you again next time, Wrestling Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.